السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل دلالة في النار أما بعد After praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking his aid, his assistance and his forgiveness then we seek refuge with Allah from the evils of our souls and from the evils of our actions As Muslims we believe that whomsoever Allah guides there is none to misguide and whomsoever Allah the mighty and majestic misguides due to a disease or a perversion in the heart there is none to guide I bear witness that there is nothing which has a right to be worshipped except Allah alone without any partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad bin Abdullah alayhi salatu was salam is his slave and his final messenger. As Muslims we believe that whomsoever Allah guides there is none to misguide. And whomsoever Allah the mighty and majestic misguides due to a disease or a perversion in the hearts there is none to guide. I bear witness that there is nothing which has a right to be worshipped except Allah alone without any partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad bin Abdullah alayhi salatu was salam is his slave and his final messenger. The best speech is the speech of Allah, the best of guidance and examples, the guidance and example of the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The worst of all affairs are the newly invented matters. Every newly invented matter is an accursed innovation. Every accursed innovation, misguidance, and every misguidance with its adherent leads to the hellfire. Then, first and foremost, welcoming our brothers and sisters to this uh, series of seminars in clarification and explanation and reminding you likewise a reminder of the sunnah of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that which the early salaf or the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, the companions of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, were upon. These series of lectures, inshallah, and the intent behind them, at least from my point of view, is that we lay down some of the principles and some of the foundations upon which Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left his companions upon and left us therefore upon up until the hour is established. And during the course of these lectures, and we began them yesterday, uh, by uh, a Jummah khutbah and thereafter by a lecture or, t or two lectures that were delivered in the evening clarifying uh, without leaving any room for maneuver with regard to that which the Salaf or the great Imams of the past the Imam, the Imams of guidance of the past were upon and they are collectively known as our Salaf so as the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recommended them and mentioned them with goodness when he said, خَيْرٌ nas qarni, ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ That indeed the best of mankind is my generation. Then those who come after them, then those who come after them. So the best of mankind was that generation. And we mentioned many of their names or some of their names yesterday and some of the, uh, the legacy that they left behind by way of ilm, by way of knowledge and by way of action. And every single generation that proceeds from their generations is expected to follow that generation. And they are none other than, of course, in the purest sense, the Prophet ﷺ and his companions, because the generations that came after, meaning the generation of the Tabi'een and the Atba'u Tabi'een, they likewise were commanded to follow the way of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. In the famous statement or the famous ayah that many of the Salafis are familiar with or many of the people of Sunnah are familiar with, in which Allah Jalla wa Ala, Allah the Mighty and Majestic has stated, وَمَن يُشَاقِقِي رَسُولَ مِن بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى وَيَأْتَبِ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ نُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّ وَنُسْلِهِ جَهَنَّمَ وَسَاءَتْ مَسِيرًا Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated, that whomsoever contends with the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
after the clear guidance has been conveyed to him. And then he chooses a path other than the path of the messenger's companions, the believers, the companions of Allah's messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then Allah will leave him in the path that he has chosen, which is in opposition to the path of the companions of Allah's messenger, and leave him in that path that he has chosen, uh, burn him in the hellfire, and what an evil destination. For whom, ya ikhwan wa akhawat, my noble brothers and sisters, may Allah bless you, and may Allah reward you with good, who is the one whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made as the distinguishing sign between the people of Jannah and the people of the hellfire? None other than the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his noble companions. Following the companions of Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam leads that person to the path to Jannah. Opposing the companions of Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, opposing that which they were upon by way of their belief, by way of their methodology, by way of their actions, by way of their behavior, by way of their attributes in terms of their nobility and their excellence, opposing the way of the companions leads to the path of, Jan of, of the hellfire of Jahannam. But as for following the path of the Sahaba, then that is the path that we have been commanded to follow. No doubt the time that we are living in today, in the era that we are living in today, then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that a time will not come except that the time that comes after it is worse than the time that came before it. So the time that we are living in in general, there has not been a worse time for the Muslims, a worse time for mankind than the time that we are living in now in general. As Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala, the great muhaddith and the mujaddid of this era, the great reviver of the hadith, and the scholar of hadith of this era said that no doubt that in every era and every generation, in general things get worse. Because as the hour approaches, as the coming of the Dajjal approaches, as the descent of Isa ibn Maryam approaches, as the coming of the Mahdi approaches, as the appearance of, of, uh, of uh, Juj wa Majuj approaches, that as this time approaches, then no doubt, ya ikhwan, that this time where all of these events that they are approaching, that the time that we are in now is a time that is in general worse than any other era that came before. And worse in a general sense. In the sense that the era that we are living in now and the time that we are living in now, people are far away from the sunnah in general. More than they've been before, in general. That the era that we are living in now, the Muslims are more in turmoil than they've ever been before. The era that we are living in now and the time that we are living in now, the Muslims are more divided than they've ever been before. And the Muslims are, have enmity towards each other, more enmity than they've had before in general. But however, it is not all, as the Shaykh al-Albani has mentioned, it is not upon the Muslim to become disheartened and to despair. Rather, the final affair, ya ikhwan, is for Islam and the Muslimin. The final affair is for the sunnah of Allah's messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the final affair is for those who stick to the way of the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum. When Isa ibn Maryam descends, then no doubt he will establish the madhab of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. He will establish the madhab of that of the Sahaba who were taught by the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He will establish the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Isa ibn Maryam descends, no doubt. When Isa ibn Maryam descends, he will not follow one of the madhahib that are apparently out there. He will not be a Shi'i, nor will he be from the Khawarij, nor will he be Sufi. Nor will he claim to be Hanafi, nor will he claim to be Shafi'i, nor will he claim to be any of these things, except that he will be upon the Sunnah of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do you not know, ya ikhwan, of the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, al-Faruq radiallahu anhu, when he came out of his house and he had with him the Torah, he had with him the Torah, the, what is commonly referred to today as the Old Testament, with him. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw him and he became angered. The Messenger of Allah became angry. And he looked towards Umar and he said, Oh son of Al-Khattab, Oh son of Al-Khattab, meaning Umar, do you not know that even if Musa was alive today, alayhi salam, Moses, the Prophet himself, was alive today, he would have no choice but to follow me. So if the Prophets have no choice but to follow the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the prophets have no choice. The rest of